Black bear are actually a native species to Texas, and although they were extirpated in the 1940s and 1950s, they've started recolonizing the Trans-Pecos. Most human-bear conflict occurs because of human-created food sources. Whether that's intentionally or unintentionally, it's any type of food, whether it's pet food, livestock feed, deer feeders, which can attract bears to an area and bears will take advantage of. It's important to prevent black bears from becoming conditioned to human foods in order to keep them out of human environments. Whenever black bears come into human environments, they're posing a risk to themselves more so than humans because they become attracted to things close to our homes. It's extremely important that the public helps us prevent human bear conflicts so that we do not educate black bear to a human related food source. Our entire mission is to keep bears wild. When you're trying to think about what could be an attractant to a black bear, essentially we like to compare them to a 300 pound raccoon. Any source of food that you think a raccoon would be interested in, a black bear will also be interested in. So as part of the outreach that Parks and Wildlife is doing to help incentivize bearwise communities, we have a list of bearwise basics that homeowners can do in order to secure their house from potential attractants. And those include never feeding or approaching a bear, always securing your food or garbage during the night and only putting garbage out in the morning on the day of pickup. We also want you to secure any pet food that may be easily available to black bear by having them stored inside a barn or a shed. We also ask that you store and clean your grills. And if that means cleaning it thoroughly and then putting it in a shed or a garage of some sort, we recommend that. Initially, when the bear activity started last year, they were getting into our dumpsters. So we had been in communication with them regarding bear sightings, reporting activity in the area. And so when it became an ongoing issue, they offered their resources and knowledge, came out on site. They were really instrumental in helping us get the bear proof dumpsters. So Texas Parks and Wildlife worked with Terlingua Ranch Lodge um, to get bear proof dumpsters. Um, they partnered with Texas Disposal Systems and what makes these dumpsters bear proof is the solid metal lid, which if a black bear were to stand on it, it wouldn't be able to collapse. And also the locking mechanism, which is very difficult for a black bear to reach in order to open, but a human can easily reach a hand in, press the lever and open the lid. And so essentially those two aspects make this dumpster bear resistant. It's working wonderfully. Yeah, we have had zero issues since then, really. So we have Texas Parks and Wildlife to thank for that, for sure. This is a temporary solution that we've got for the residents here of Trilingua Ranch. This is an energized electrified dumpster. So you can see here that we've got a metal dumpster. However, it's got a plastic lid. The plastic lid is really easy for black bears to access if it's not electrified. So this dumpster has been hooked up to an electric energizer, which you can see there. The dumpster body, the metal part here, is positively charged by the energizer. We have an insulative rubber pad underneath the dumpster, and underneath that we have a negatively charged cattle panel. Thus, when the bear approaches the dumpster, he will be making contact with the negatively charged panel and then make contact with the metal dumpster and receive a shock. So what we have here is a bird feeder protected by an unwelcome mat. 
Unwelcome mats can be used to protect things that can't traditionally be electrified, such as entryways like doors and windows, or even things like bird feeders. In this case, the bird feeder is also protected by a very tall pole, making it really difficult for the bear to reach up and grab the attractant up there, the free bird seed and the bait, without trying to step on this unwelcome mat. When a bear tries to step on the unwelcome mat, the nails aren't intended to really cause him harm, but just to make him feel uncomfortable when he puts his foot on this mat. Therefore, the bear won't be able to reach up there and grab the bird seed. When we construct unwelcome mats, they can be constructed out of a variety of platform materials. This unwelcome mat is constructed with a rubber horse stall mat, and you can actually use other things like particle board, plywood, and other types of flat materials to make your unwelcome mat. Then you stud it with nails approximately one and a half inches apart. You can cut an unwelcome mat to fit the needs of any type of location that you're trying to prevent a bear from accessing. So you can make a rectangular one, or in this case, we've made a circular one. Texas Parks and Wildlife would like to encourage any landowners who are experiencing human-bear conflict to report those conflicts to Texas Parks and Wildlife biologists or a local game warden. That way we can keep track of activity in a given area. For more information, go to the description of this video.